Whenever you don't listen to the voice that's telling you you're killing yourself, you said no to your brain, you know, you're going too hard, you definitely pay for it. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes that's worth it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we haven't talked to you before. Like, just start with like presentation. Bro. Like, yeah. who are you and you know, what do you do? <laughs> There's not much to know. <laughs> My name is David Laney, and I grew up in Oregon. That you don't realize how weird it is until you leave, and then you, then it's too late. A lot of people who migrated across the continent and were fine leaving the cities of the east and people who like being alone, you know, like Alaska was, you know, like now, Oregon was 100 years ago. David is favorite runner of your favorite runner. So <laughs> that's the first thing I have to say about David. The people who came across the Oregon Trail, definitely a unique breed of people. Mostly people who like being outside. 2013 was my first tra like real trail race. There were some like sponsored athletes, but it wasn't like nothing like it is now. You know, my first UTMB was 2015. And even then it was half of the insanity it is now. It has elevated everyone's, you know, professionalism. Like, you have to literally train harder. You have to literally be smarter. While, I would say five years ago, you could kind of just skate by and be kind of good enough to win a few races or, you know, be good at, be interesting or whatever. And now it's like, you have to be interesting and you have to be fast and you have to, you know, show up every day because there's a bunch of people right behind you who, and in front of you, who are really good too. UTMB is like most important ultra trail running race in the world. If you want to prove yourself, you have to be here because you will find another, at least 30, 40 really, you know, tough runners here. In other races, you can find like three, four, maybe 10, but this is the place to be if you want to prove yourself. 2015 was my first UTMB, and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I got here maybe a week before, so I did a few little runs. You know, I was like, if I finish, it'll be amazing. The night just went really well, and kind of as the sun came up, things started to click. It was fun to kind of have that experience as of third, first time at UTMB. It was exciting. Um, I don't think anything special happened that night. I just think nothing really went wrong. And if nothing goes wrong, you know, people run pretty fast. <laughs> you know, this year I'm only running the 100K. The last 100 kilometers of the 100 mile. CCC is basically half of the race of the UTMB. So it's basically the same, but it's way faster. 10 hours for the first man and 11 for the first woman, and UTMB is double the time. It's basically the same challenge, but with faster runners. Very few people just wake up and naturally want to go running. Like, it's physically hard. Running is something really tangible that a person can do to make themselves disciplined. 
but if you make it a god and you try and make that what you worship, you know, the sacrifice will be yourself, you know. It will allow you to totally destroy yourself enthusiastically. He wants to try to run around 11 hours to finish. And if he wants to do the time he, he told me, he will be in the top five for sure. You know, people go out super fast. So as long as I'm in a competitive position, hopefully in the top 15. If I'm in the top 15 with 50K to go, I'll be really happy. Yeah. Normally he is a, that kind of runner that he starts, you know, not like the first runners and then he starts to hunt in runners in the second half. Uh, being like confident from the start and don't go too fast in the first half and then the second half, you know, start to, you know, get runners and passing runners all the time. I think you felt like um, when you race hard, sometimes uh, your stomach breaks down and you take on like a lot of sugars and then push just a little bit over your, your uh, limit. And that's, Come on, man. that's what we do in races all the time. And, and sometimes you get away with that and sometimes not. Did he say where it went bad? Um, I think when he, like Mimi and Tony, who was crewing, and said already when he came into Champé, he, he just wanted to drink water. He didn't want to take his gels and stuff. So I guess that was like halfway through. So that's also a long way where you can't eat anything because then it gets like just getting through. You can't really push anymore when you don't have any calories really. It's especially hard, I think, the CCC race, that is a long race, but you're still running way faster than UTMB. Like, yeah, you're really pushing in the uphills, and it's also a lot of, like, really smooth downhills where you hammer it, like, so you need the legs and you need the, the, uh, the lungs in the uphills. Um, so I think, yeah, it's that, like, fine border all the time uh, um, to try to, like, uh, go with people and uh, uh, and push or to to not like cook yourself too much <laughs> okay. when it goes bad you just contemplate life and the middle third is really challenging like you're in the core of the race, you know, you're not feeling the magnetism of the finish line and you're not fresh and you're, so the middle's always tough. You know, you have a lot of doubts, like, can I literally do this? And it's a difficult part because a lot of times everybody still pe feels pretty good, no one's slowing down. Um, you know, that's a time when a lot of, I have doubts and a lot of people have doubts and you just kind of have to, you know, just focus on the next aid station, the next step, keep your mind in the trail. And it's like 10 hours of your only focus is just going as fast as you possibly can. And really no distractions, like you're just in this kind of tunnel 
of focus. So he, he finished, you know, and I mean, maybe he had felt worse if he didn't finish. I think that's like up to everyone if that's something that makes you uh, feel better about uh, having a bad race or worse. Like, so, but I think, I feel like he was really disappointed. Like, and he was having a good race and I did just, so I think that's part also, he was actually moving up halfway and going to have a really good race and then it just breaks down. So I think that's also um, uh, tough. And like that, you know, it's over. Good luck, <laughs> go deal with your life. <laughs> I don't very well. Um, you go back to reality and it's like, it's like very hard to deal with. You know, like if your stomach starts feeling bad or you're, you're, you have a blister and it's like, well, I have to go run 30 miles on this and it's, my foot's bleeding, you know? And it's like, it's like actually no one cares and, and neither should you because in two weeks it will be gone and who cares, like, you, yeah, you might throw up. Like that's, that's nice. Like have in have a have a th nice throw up and then keep going because it really doesn't matter and no literally no one actually cares and neither do you. You know this part of you that's telling you to care, you should probably ignore. You just have to sometimes take a deep breath and be patient and like have some perspective like maybe you're pissed off or angry at the in traffic or at the grocery store or like some relationship is somewhat difficult and then it you know you kind of have to be like actually what's what's bad here is me being angry about it not the slight amount of stress like the blister's not a big nobody cares about the blister it doesn't matter what cares is what's up here about that, you know? And like, that's what always is the problem. Like the problem is up here about the relationship or about the traffic. Or, and then it's like, oh, well now it's, the, I'm the problem actually. Yeah, my dude. Rough day. Dude, brutal day. Oh. You're fine. I mean, you're not fine. No, he's fine. I was stumbling, I fell like into the dirt and just like passed out. Like, I think I was hypoglycemic and dizzy and... <laughs> We're just everyday heroes. <laughs>